Do you mind me the question? I just said, what do you mean? You were saying that the most important thing to become an entrepreneur that you struggle with is what? That you're what? You were talking about the most important thing that an entrepreneur does is blank. And then I didn't understand it, so I asked you what you meant. Mm, I remember. It's all gonna make sense, so don't you worry. This is like a compass. The most important thing in life in general is to see that path. I drew this a little bit more complicated than it needed. But to find where it doesn't take much effort in order to go reach a great peak. And so it's like pointing the compass in this case, I'm looking at, this is you drawing more clothing. I know you like to draw, but whenever you feel like I wanna work on my business, we have to make sure if it's the right thing, you're going to do really, really well. And I, and I say that because Specifically with the like video, send it. It's something that I think is more frightening. And so something that holds people back from actually taking the path of least resistance is when it gets real, like when it's like, oh crap, I'm actually gonna put myself out there and, and say this, that can be a barrier. That is the barrier that we all have, is just courage to truly be ourselves. I don't think I'm a kind of guy. I think that's the task that I have less fun doing. Mm. Yes. And, and the reason why we have less fun doing some things is that we fear often that it's the less optimal path. You know? I mean, you 
kind of categorize action into, I fear doing X. Or I look forward or excited to doing X. Yeah, I mean, I do think part of me is like, okay, this will take X amount of time, and the percent chance I get a response is less than one. And that is where an entrepreneur needs to play in, is the, the one percent. You need to make a hundred of those. In this case, you're shooting for something big, right? Like it's a really big opportunity to get in front of these people. People spend a ton of time doing it in ways that never even reach them. And you have a direct door access there. This has Can led. Work yes, hundred percent. You got funding. I have a call tomorrow with. It's a follow up with Blockchain Founders Fund. Um. So from this method funding, no. Partnerships, yes. Again, 1% of a million is $10,000. So how long does it take to do that thing and then place your bet? It's a casino at the end of the day. A business is a casino that you game with your skill. Rather than the house always winning, it's up to you being better than the average intelligence in entrepreneurship, which is actually very low. That's what I'm saying when I'm just like, I know you'll win, because you're very smart when you put your energy into it. Seriously, you're gonna kill. So remember, ways big potential for killing, take it and go kill it. It's like hunting. I am the principal of Startup College. I am a business philosopher. <laughs> I, th I do think I love the theory of business a lot.
Basically, I just started thinking about, and I put the pitch together recently for Danielle, on what the bet is that I'm trying to make. The, the big disruption I'm trying to make is how capital turns into value at the core fundamental level of business itself. And I think the system is broken and that, that's hurting the capability and potential of many people who can help solve a lot of the world's problems and in general, build a more efficient venture capital system that allows more people to play in the game and it to be less of a Ponzi scheme. Less of a Ponzi scheme meaning if the venture capital market was more efficient, money would flow into this as an asset class. That is what venture capital is, it's an asset class and based on its performance, it has the potential to win. Of course, venture capital as an asset class, because it's a focus of the system of turning capital into value through startups is bound to change over time. And it's been changing, it's been getting earlier. Pre-seed wasn't the thing from the beginning of startups and so it at least tells us the direction that the line is heading in terms of what's going to win in the market and so the direction is smaller bets and more of them and if we extrapolate smaller bets and more of them out to its inevitable stop it'll be when it competes with the job market and that's because that's a, that's a marketplace where people just pick a value to sell their time. And since the value of startups and entrepreneurship is increasing, it's an underserved market as well. Smaller bets, more of them, and then you can de-risk it by making it much smaller bets by factoring in time. Which is where what we're really trying to see when we invest in an entrepreneur is how much innovation potential do they have? Where are they going to end up? thing is you have to see it over time. It's not about where someone is, it's about where they're going. And so by doing it through this method, um, basically I'm writing that out as why it's such a disruptive, inevitable system for, for venture capital. And, and when you bet on inevitabilities in the right markets, it's massive. And that's what venture capital is actually all about. What's funny is that rather than venture capital is typically being used to disrupt another sort of industry, in this case, the pitch is venture capital that can disrupt itself. And kind of my thesis is that most funds, so all funds basically practice the same ritual. Um, which is actually a really bad sign. It means there's not enough incentive for innovation in funds. Why, why would you think that? Well, the fact that the market has 
such a steep amount of funds all following the same ideology in terms of their method of capital innovation. This is what tells us that people aren't trying enough things. There are some that are better because accelerators are forming. So we can actually see that there is a movement towards a certain sector of this. And so us betting on where the market is going to be, the entire venture capital market is going to be, the innovation market itself, which is a scalable market because it's a focus on the creation of value. There is no limit to that until heaven's here. So that's the one to build for. And maybe there is no limit to that either. Yeah. Anyway, smaller bets are always winning. The old fellowship, accelerators, Y Combinator. And so if we optimize Y Combinator, then you would get Uni Combinator. So I'm, I'm basically making the, the pre-seed version of Y Combinator. I kind of want to funnel people into YC itself. And Not necessarily has to funnel into YC. Actually, I'll take that out. That's like an opportunity to work with them because they would want us to funnel into YC. The methodology here, I think, is quite good when we say pre seed of YC, which is to say that it's. YC with smaller bets and more of them. And I think that that is a big, big winning bet. Questions? something I'm always happy for. I love discussing knowledge. I love you. Thank you. Sleep tight. <laughs>